Hi guys, welcome to Life Pro. My name is Wamboi Moiroshe and today we are talking about sexual purity and sexual sin is a big temptation uh, with us young people and even not young people. <laughs> and so we want to talk about sexual purity, what that actually is and how we can cope with that. And so with me today I have friends who are going to introduce themselves from their right hi guys my name is Catherine I am not Kenyan I am from the US I've been in Kenya for about three years and I work at an all-girls boarding school in Tagoni called Ahuru Girls uh, leading the education team there and the discipleship team hi guys my name is Brenda Wanjeza and I'm a student in the University of Nairobi. I'm pursuing education and I'm the first girl in our house. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Joanne Kongo. I am a student at St. Paul's University pursuing community development. Um. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Omboi Mishore and I am your host. So guys, sexual purity. Um, how would you define sexual purity, John? Um, being sexually pure. <laughs> like, <laughs> and that includes everything, like even what you watch, what the conversations you have with the people around you um i think it we can't limit it to just sex like literally you know like it's so wide of like what you're taking in and yeah something like that i don't have like a definite <laughs> definition yeah i think it's good that you mentioned that because like our bodies are the temple and we are supposed to keep it holy but as much as we are keeping the temple holy like there is also purity of our thoughts and even what we feel and um maybe it ask why do you feel um why do you think that this is something that we need to talk about as christians why don't we just like it's okay everyone knows what to do so why is it important to talk about it I, I would say one, none of us know what to do. Um, <laughs> the exact opposite of everyone knows what to do. Um, I think no matter whether you are sexually active or not, or you've uh, been caught in adultery or not, or you <clears throat> are into pornography or not, all of us are sexually broken because we are sexual people who are in a broken world and so to some degree all of us are sexually broken so that is one reason we need to talk about it and I also think the the more I've talked about this and learned about it and prayed about it and sought the Lord about it I think um, as with anything in life um, but especially especially because sexual sin can be so damaging to us um, we have to start before we even get to um, yeah what's the right thing to do or what's the line that we can cross or any of those conversations you end up having and saying that one of one of my favorite uh, teachers on this is his name is Paul David Tripp a pastor in the US and he says the four most important words about sex is the first four words of the Bible in the beginning God and so if we're if we're willing to give our salvation as if we want to talk about young believers our our eternity to the lord um, and trust him with our eternity then why wouldn't we trust him with how he intends sex to be done he created everything the bible says all things were created by him and through him and for him so sex itself is something he gave to us he created so he knows best so we need to be talking about what god sees 
Um, so when you ask the question to Joanne of how do we define sexual purity, um, God defines it, uh, not whatever we think. Yes. And I think it's good that you mentioned in the beginning because he created all things, sex in included, and he said that it was good. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when sometimes we are having this conversation, like sex is portrayed as not a good thing, but it is good because God created it. And I think my definition of sexual sin would be like satisfying that God-given desire out, outside of God's design for it. Yeah. Um, gender? Addition? <laughs> no, you said it all. Okay. Um, so I think my next question would be um, how do we, what are ways in which like we can cope with sexual sin, be it Fornication, adultery, pornography, mm -hmm. what are ways we can cope with sexual sin? I want to start that one because I want to pass to you all afterwards. So keep listening because I'm going to give what maybe feels like the the older person answer or the <laughs> the the pastor type answer, but the Bible says, Paul says very clearly, flee sexual immorality. And Again, we can get into depths of what sexual immorality actually means, but the word flee doesn't mean tiptoe around it or maybe stick your toe in and see what's going to happen and then go away. No, flee means run the other way. Um, and I have a follow-up point to that later that I want to add, but that would be where I would start is in, when it comes to immoral things with sex, remembering that sex is good it's not all bad. It's actually all good until we make it bad. Um, and so, but when it comes to the Im immoral ways, the Bible very clearly says to flee it, so mm -hmm. run from it. Um, um, I would say um, set boundaries because right now most people are in relationships. Like you get, because you're in a relationship, you should have sex and such. So I'm um, setting boundaries and actually knowing that sex is for marriage, not for relationship. Because we are dating, it doesn't mean we are going to have sex or anything. So I'm setting boundaries in a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'll just say, always ask yourself, what does God say about it? like everything even when it comes to um what you watch what you take in conversations you're having what you think about i think i'll go back to it of what does god say about it because we we have this 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 quote this question that i don't like of how far it's too far like what does god say about it <laughs> it's not about what i think where far is it's about what does god say about it mm -hmm. yeah. and and if i can speak kind of those two together of when we say set boundaries yeah it's not just okay I shouldn't have sex again it says flee sexual immorality and so what does God say about those movies you're watching that even though again maybe it sounds like the old person in the room talking but I've told you all this of if we watch every day let's take sex out of it if I every day binge on watching a show about a doctor. At some point, I start to think, oh, I can be a doctor. Like, <laughs> this sounds cool. Yep, yeah? I know what you're talking about. Um, yeah. <laughs> Joanne thinks she can be an FBI agent because <laughs> she watches so many shows. But, I mean, maybe that's taking it to an extreme. But if every day we're watching or listening to things, because our ears are just as, as sensitive as our eyes, of we hear music that just talks about you know, going to the club and doing whatever and going home with the guy. Like that's not setting boundaries for ourselves because it's letting ourselves hear um, the things that are sexually immoral. So I think, yeah, we we must um, set boundaries in and look at, okay, what does God say about all these things in our lives? Um, um, I hear you guys and let me just ask, um, 
someone who is watching us and being like okay mm. i hear you. i did not do that mm. i did not do that i'm not listening to god i'm not and they feel like they've messed up what message would you give to that person who is listening right now and they'll be like yo i've messed up god loves broken things i think he does a lot with that mm. um and i'd say it doesn't end there there is still next as long as you choose next because there is next but do you actually want next like the next chapter of it or the hope or yeah so I'll just say there is next but you have to choose it for yourself mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would also say as I said earlier all of us including the four of us sitting here talking to you about this are sexually broken like things have happened um, and and so as Joanne has said the Lord loves to use broken things. Um, if we look at the Bible of the story, many stories, but um, one in particular of the story of the adulterous woman, you know, all of the Pharisees wanted to throw stones at her, and and he said, you know, you who have no sin, throw the first one, and no one threw one. And then he looked at her and he said where are all your accusers and then he said go and sin no more and so just as Joanne is saying in that he says he looks at her with compassion and he 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 sees her brokenness and he he wants her to be with him but then he also says go and sin no more and so there is that next too and so I think it's important we don't make light of okay, you've had sexual sin, now let's just move on. Um, We don't make light of it because Jesus himself said, go and sin no more. But we also see the beauty of how he takes broken things and makes them whole. Um, And that's what he does in everything. Sexual sin is so damaging. um, And we could go on and on about that, but it's also still sin. Um, and, and all of us have sin and we're all broken to some degree. And so don't think that just because yours is sexual that Jesus can't take that and heal that. He, he loves to, to, to heal the, the worst of us. So guys, we know that sexual purity, sexual sin is a very wide topic. Um, and we are definitely going to talk more about this right here on Life Probe so you can Tell us what you think in the comment section down below. Tell us what questions you might have so that we can bring in like people to speak more about it. Um, and definitely subscribe. And I've been your host, Wamboy Mwe So, ciao. <laughs>